Pepsi-Cola, P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy. Calling Washington. United States counter spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the fabulous formula, a thrilling counter spy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by delicious Pepsi-Cola. And now, another report to the American people. In your family's interest, listen to these findings, recently released by the United States Testing Company, Incorporated. After thorough and impartial tests, Pepsi-Cola proved of highest purity. Pepsi-Cola has more quick food energy and value, ounce for ounce, than any other leading nationally known cola. Yes, Tested, compared against all other leading nationally known cola drinks, Pepsi-Cola won out. You get the best, and twice as much, in delicious Pepsi-Cola. And now to Counter Spy. On the morning of March 14, 1950, Dr. Frederick Ziegler, eminent scientist in chemical research, was in the secret basement laboratory of his home on the outskirts of Philadelphia, talking to his assistant, Anthony Kirk. Kirk, my boy, I finished the experiment. That is why I called you. I wanted you to be one of the first to hear the good news. Well, I really appreciate that, Dr. Ziegler. Uh, of course, you never did tell me just what the experiment was. Well, now I feel free to tell you, Kirk. What I have accomplished will be vitally important to our national defense. Come over here to the left table. All right. Just a moment till I unlock this door. Okay. Well, Kirk, here it is. Hmm, it looks like uh, mica. <laughs> it is mica, my boy, in a way. Uh, in a way? It is an artificially produced matter with all the invaluable properties of mica inherent. With the formula I developed, an unlimited amount of this matter can be chemically manufactured quickly and inexpensively. Uh, what about the formula itself? It's all down here in this book. Is that right? Well, thanks, Doctor. Oh, my Kirk. I'm keeping this formula. Keeping? <laughs> Now, stop joking, my boy. Come now, give me... Oh, stay right where you are. Kirk! Now you can see I'm not joking. Unless this gun amuses you. My boy, what has gotten into you? Sit down, doctor. Uh, on that lab stool there. But, Kirk... Sit down. I... Don't you try to move. What are you going to do? I'm going to perform an experiment of my own. Just for you. Now, watch closely. I take some cotton out of the wrapper in the medical aid kit here. Uh, that's the first step. Now, the second step. I pour some of this nitroglycerin onto a handful of the cotton. And then I let it soak through for a moment and dry a bit in the air. And then I stuff it into this crucible on the lab table in front of you. <laughs> Well, Doctor, what do you think of my experiment so far? You have made gun cotton. Uh-huh. A simple but effective explosive. Uh, now we need a fuse to ignite our gun cotton, don't we? Hmm? Oh, we pull out a long strand of the cotton, stretching at the length of the lab table like this. Now... We're all set to make the test. You're going to kill me. Oh, no, no, Dr. Ziegler. 
You're killing yourself. You see, uh, chemical labs are notoriously dangerous places in which to work. Uh, you're going to have an accident which destroys not only you, but seemingly uh, your formula, too. Kirk, I hope when they get you... Sorry, no time for bitterness. Goodbye, Doctor. Thanks for everything. just as I stepped out of the side door. Now, Kirk, you sure about Dr. Ziegler's housekeeper, huh? Positive. Today is her day off. And you're also sure that the formula on these pages you gave me is complete? There's no mistake about that, Rudolph. Sure. There's Freddy now. Yeah, wait a minute. I'll let him in. Come on in, Freddy. To you. Well, nice work in getting that formula, Kirk, old chap. Uh, thanks for the compliment, Freddy, but right now I'm more interested in getting paid off for my work and leaving Philly. I received a message from the contact. This note was delivered to me a half hour ago. Read it, Rudolph. Find the living symbol of an empire, and you'll discover it's educational and entertaining. Yes, those are the directions where to meet the contact, whoever he may be. What kind of a stupid kid's game is this? Freddy, you told Rudolph and me we'd get our share when we delivered the formula. Yes, yes, when it's delivered to the contact. Well, I've been working a bit on this cryptogram. The living symbol of an empire. All right. The British Empire. The lion. Does that make sense? Yeah, let me see that again. Hmm. Lion, educational and entertaining... Sure, the public library. No, you forget, old thing. It says living symbol. Those are stone lines. Now, look, I've done all the dirty work so far, and I want money for it, not puzzles. I want money. Hold on, Kirk. What now? Lions. Living symbols. Yes. Come along, you two. Where are we going, Freddy? Why, to the lion house, Rudolph, old chap. The lion house in the park zoo. Mr. Harding and Mr. Peters are here. Uh, have them come in. And Miss White. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't want any interruptions for the next half hour. Very well, Mr. Carson. Gentlemen, will you come in, please? Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Carson. Afternoon, Mr. Harding. How are you, Mr. Peters? Fine, thank you. Uh, please sit down, gentlemen. I had just sent for some lunch. Join me? No, thank you, but I would take a Pepsi Cola. Make that two. Uh, Miss White, please add two Pepsis to my order. Yes, sir. Now, uh, Mr. Harding, uh, I've been keeping you informed about Dr. Frederick Ziegler of Philadelphia and his efforts to uh, compound artificial mica. Yeah. Well, uh, at last he has succeeded. Oh? Yes, I got a call from him early this morning. Oh, that's wonderful news, Mr. Carson. Well, I suppose you'd like to counter spy to keep the doctor, his home, and his private laboratory under surveillance. Is that it? That's it, exactly. Well, on the way upstairs here, I started to brief Peters on the importance of artificial mica, Mr. Carson. Maybe you'd like to take the ball for me. Glad to. Uh, Mr. Peters, the Department of National Defense has a very special interest in mica. Yes, Mr. Harding got that far. It's used in radar and radio apparatus. A uh, very strategic material for such equipment, and uh, our supply of it in its natural state could be readily cut off. Mm -hmm. Uh, last year, the United States used 10,000 tons of mica, and all but 135 tons came from abroad. Then Dr. Ziegler's really got something there. Yes, he most certainly has. Now we'll be supplied with mica in unlimited quantity. Uh, pardon me, huh? 
Miss White, didn't I tell you I wanted no interruptions? I'm sorry, sir, but this is very important. It's about Dr. Ziegler. He's dead. What? The doctor's housekeeper just called. The doctor was killed in an explosion in his basement laboratory. They haven't been able to reach his assistant, Anthony Kirk, as yet. Uh, thank you, Miss White. You heard that, gentlemen? Yes. Peters, call the airport. Tell them to have my plane ready. We're getting to Dr. Ziegler's lab in Philadelphia as fast as we can. After the explosion, the papers on the table here must have caught fire. I wonder what Ziegler was doing when the explosion went off. Well, from the way it looks, he was mixing something in this crucible. In for... Peter. Hmm? Look at this on the side of his forehead. Hmm? Yes. Yeah. Small blue marks, like... Like letters. One of them reversed. A C O. Mm -hmm. Something was printing on it was blown against his head, blown hard enough to leave the imprint of those letters. C-O-T. I wonder. Wait. That first aid chest over there on the wall. Peter, look at this package of cotton. Part of the label has been torn away with the letters T-O-N left on it. I think we have the answer to the explosion, Peter. Gun cotton. Gun cotton. Plain medical cotton, probably soaked with nitroglycerin. A crude but most lethal explosive. I got you, Chief. The fragment of the wet label blew against the side of Ziegler's head, imprinting the letters. Exactly. That means the explosion was definitely no accident. Definitely. It was a scientific murder. Planned to hide the theft of a vital American defense secret. <laughs> If I'd known after a year of being cooped up with a nutty old scientist, I'd be playing games in the dark in the park zoo. Is it, does it, Kirk, old boy? Look, Freddy, I don't go for this waiting any more than Kirk. Not knowing who the contact is or when he'll show and me carrying practically TNT in my coat pocket. Violet, 25 seconds. Violet, gentlemen. Look, we don't want any. <laughs> hey, watch where you're going. Violet, for your pretty lady. Only 25 cents a buck. I said no. Get out of here. Beat it. No need to be surly, Rudolph. Here's a few coins, Mother. You can keep the poses. Just hop along like a good old girl, eh? Yes, sir. And thank you, sir. Right. Five of it. Five. Uh, you're a smart one, Freddy. Why'd you give that old dame a hand out? She's liable to remember us and... Did it occur to you, Rudolph, that your ugliness may have made a more lasting impression if I hadn't amended matters with a few coins? Freddy is right, Rudolph. Freddy is right. Okay, okay. Only you two are beginning to give me a rope. Oh. Rudolph. <gasps> what happened to him, Freddy? There, Kirk. You can see now what happened. A knife in his back. Who threw it? Where did it come from? There's no time to worry about that now. I've got to get out of here quickly. A formula. In his top coat pocket. Hurry, get it. Okay, fine. Well, Kirk, don't stand there. Now that you have the formula, let's skip along. I haven't the formula. What's that? Here. Look at these pages. Nothing on them. They're blank. <laughs> Moment back to Counter Spy, presented by delicious Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola, hit the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Twice as much and better, too. Yes, twice as much and better, too. You know Pepsi gives you twice as much. You know Pepsi's better, tastes better. But I want to make sure you know which cola drink is of proven highest quality. Listen, impartial tests were made comparing all the leading nationally known colas. And here's the news. Delicious Pepsi was rated tops for quick food energy and honest-to-goodness value, ounce for ounce. Yes, more value and quick food energy in every tasty sip of Pepsi. That's why Pepsi's so refreshing. 
Why you feel so good, why you're on the feet, why people call Pepsi their favorite treat, when the quality's proof tops and the taste is so delightful, so refreshing that you bubble and the quantity is double, say, is it any wonder Pepsi's America's big, big favorite? Insist on tasty Pepsi wherever you may be. At the fountain, say, Pepsi, please. At the stand, say, Pepsi, please. And at the store, get Pepsi in the money-saving carton of six big bottles. How about getting a carton tonight of delicious Pepsi-Cola? Delicious Pepsi-Cola, delicious Pepsi-Cola, delicious Pepsi-Cola, delicious Pepsi-Cola. And now, back to Counter Spy. Attention all Counter Spies in Philadelphia sector. Blue alert. Repeat. Blue alert. This is David Harding. Wanted Anthony Kirk for the murder of Dr. Frederick Ziegler and the theft of a vital national defense secret. Warning, proceed with caution. Kirk is probably armed and will fire to avoid capture. This man must be apprehended, dead or alive. We'll be out of the park in a few moments, Kirk. Lucky no one saw us near Rudolph. What bothers me, Freddy, is what could have happened to the formula that was in Rudolph's pocket. I have an idea, Kirk, that Rudolph was trying a bit of fancy business on us. You mean a double cross? Right. It probably left the formula papers in the apartment. Sleight of hand, you know. All right, but who threw that knife? I have an idea about that too, old chap. I believe that knife was meant for one of us. What? I believe Rudolph's plan, with the help of an accomplice, was to rid himself of us one at a time. Oh, and he stepped in the wrong direction and got the knife and... Here, hold up, old chap. What's wrong? Up to walk a bit. The flower woman. We can't let her see us. Uh, it's too late now. She's coming this way. What do we do? We still have luck on our side, old boy. It's getting quite dark. No one's in sight. The bushes on either side of the walk will afford excellent protection. Protection? What do you mean? For what? For an ugly but necessary action. All right, here she comes. Violet. Only 25 cents to buy. Violet. Hello, Mother. Well, don't you remember me? Oh, yes, yes. You're the kind gentleman who was at the zoo. I'm glad I met you again. There's something I want to repay. Well, this is the place to do it. So it is, Freddy. What? Hey, what is this? She's not an old woman at all. But even you didn't recognize me, did you, Freddy? Vivian! But I, I, I had no idea you were the contact. Freddy! Who is she? With Kirk, old chap, I have the honor to present you to Vivian Lawrence. Your unknown employer, Kirk. I I don't get all this. Well, I'd be brief, Kirk. I got the formula from Rudolph's pocket back at the zoo. And it was I who threw the knife which killed Rudolph. A knife just like this one. Oh, but uh, why did you do it? Rudolph was working for you as I was. You used exactly the proper tense, Kirk. As you were... All right, Freddy. Drag him into the bushes and we'll be on our way. Peters calling Mr. Harding in car C7. Harding, go ahead, Peters. I'm in the city park, Dave. We've located Anthony Kirk. Yeah? He's got a knife in his chest. A passerby heard him groaning in the bushes. Kirk is the second stabbing victim found in the park within ten minutes. The other one is dead. What about the formula? No sign of it, Dave. Kirk hasn't talked so far. The ambulance doc says he may not be alive by the time they reach City Hospital. Peters, get into that ambulance. Have them go by way of Market Street. I'll intercept you as fast as I can. Here's Mr. Harding, Chief of the United States Counter Spies. I want you to listen to what he says. Uh, Kirk, you're dying. Talking now, telling the truth, can only help. The doctor says you have perhaps five minutes at the outside. Uh, five minutes? It's your last chance to do one decent thing, Kirk. You did kill Dr. Ziegler. I killed him. And you stole the micro formula. Yes. Where is it? She... She has it. 
She. Go ahead, Kurt. She. Who is she? Her name, Kurt. Name. Liz. Try, Kirk. Try. Vivian. Vivian L- L- Lawrence. <sighs> He's dead. Vivian Lawrence. Familiar to you, Peters? Sure is, Dave. We had plenty of trouble with that dame before Pearl Harbor when she was poking around over here for the Tin Caesars. The cleverest operator in the business. You'd say that again. Clever enough to get back into this country without detection. Yes, and clever enough to get out and sell that formula to the highest bidder, unless we work as we've never worked before. Hurry with those drinks, Freddy. Right, oh. Now we continue with our program of musical interludes. Hey, it works rather well, eh, Vivian? Naturally, Freddy. Everything I plan works well. <laughs> Really, old dear, you have such a positive nature. Well, I'd have been dead years ago if I didn't, old dear. Now, what about those drinks? I know. There you are. Thank you. Well, the toast, Vivian. <clears throat> Here's to this city of brotherly love, from which we extracted such a prize. Ah. <laughs> to Philadelphia, Freddy. And one million dollars worth of American scientific ingenuity. <laughs> <laughs> I must interrupt this program to bring you a special message from Mr. David Harding, oh, Chief Mr. of the United States Counter Spies. Mr. Harding. Uh, what could that dull soul Thank have you. to say? I'll change the station. No, wait. Let it alone. Good evening. Your counter spies have just learned the identity of the person who has stolen the formula of a secret American scientific development. Thank you. That person's name is Vivian Lawrence. Vivian, they're Be quiet. Now, you can help your government by being on the alert, on a constantly sharp lookout for any woman who resembles the description which I will give to you, and reporting such person to your nearest counter spy field office. Now, here's the detailed description Shut of Vivian up. Lawrence. She is 36 years of age. Height? We'll get out of this city. Yes, but... But where will we go? What do we do? I've found ways out before, and I'll find one now. Hello, operator? Get me the sheriff's office. Hello, sheriff? This is Bill Sampson. I operate the gas station on Seminary Hill Road, five miles east of the Crystal Railroad Crossing. There's a man and a woman outside in a car. A blue Cadillac sedan. Pulled up for gas. I'm... I'm stalling him. I'm sure the woman is that Vivian Lawrence I heard about in the radio. Positive. It, it, the car's got a Pennsylvania license number on it. Number is N6574R. They're going in the direction of the railroad crossing. All right, Sheriff. I'll try to stall him as long as I can. Now, will you let me alone, lady? I did what you told me. You won't shoot that gun, will you, lady? You go away and let me... Up. All taken care of, Freddy. Step on it. Attention all counter spies and cooperating local police in Sector D, State of Pennsylvania. Attention. This is David Harding in Control Car X-1. Information just received that Vivian Lawrence is driving along Seminary Hill Road due west in direction of Crystal Railroad Crossing. Car is a blue Cadillac sedan. License number Pennsylvania N6574R. All patrols will converge on area. Roadblocks will be set up at all intersections. I'm on my way there now to supervise operations. Vivian, I still don't see why you purposely put the bobbies on us. Freddy, I'm getting out of this present difficulty and I'm just making sure. Well, they'll be swarming along this road at any moment. Just as I planned they should. Well, it all sounds balmy to me. 
How does that sound to you, Freddy? What, that train whistle in the distance? That train is going to be my ticket to shore escape. Don't stop. But there's a railroad crossing ahead. Never mind that warning signal. Drive up on the crossing and park. But the train's coming. Yes. In exactly one minute, it will round the curve before the crossing. I've calculated everything down to the last second. Oh, I've got you, old girl. The police know this car and the license number. They'd believe, if only at first, that we were killed in the crash, thus giving us time to escape. <laughs> Am I correct? Correct, Freddy. Except for one detail. You will die in the crash. What? Don't move. I have this gun pointed right at you. Vivian. Sorry, Freddy. But you'll serve my purpose better in death. No. No, see, here, old thing, you wouldn't play a trick like that on Freddy. After all... <laughs> to prove how wrong you are. Vivian. Let go of me. No. You're staying hell with me. No, my armor train will be here. <laughs> the joke's on you, old girl. Let go. No. No. You're... Well, the car is splattered all over, but it was definitely a blue Cadillac sedan. Yeah. The license plate was found, too. I wonder just how it happened, Peter. Well, I guess they tried to race the train to the crossing. Well, if that was it, they certainly lost that race. Anyway, Dave, the government will be spared the expense of bringing Vivian Lawrence to trial. Well, Vivian Lawrence may be dead, Peter, but the important thing now is to have our men keep searching this area for the formula. Once that's found, we can mark the file on this case closed. <laughs> Pepsi-Cola. Bring it on now. Enjoy that bubbling, tangy, tasty treat. Sure hits the spot. At parties, it's a wonderful idea to serve delicious Pepsi. That extra quick food energy gives folks that bounce, that zing. And Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottles go twice as far. You get a carton of six bottles, and you serve 12 full-size drinks. So save that money. Get the best, and get twice as much in delicious Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola hits the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Twice as much and better, too. Pepsi Cola is a drink for you. Do, 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 That's it. Delicious Pepsi Cola. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen on Thursday for more facts in the exciting case of the fabulous formula. After the train wreck had been thoroughly investigated, we found our triumph had been short-lived. Your counter-spy discovered something which started the search for the fabulous formula all over again and led us to a serpent in a box. Listen on Thursday for... More facts in the case of the fabulous formula on counter-spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York and was directed by Leonard L. Bass, dramatized by Edward Adamson, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. This is Jay Jackson speaking. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi Cola. Enjoy some delicious Pepsi tonight. Uh-huh.